Hey, it's your man StyleCon coming at you today with another video. And today we're going to be looking at the Arrow version of the Swatch System 51. Now let's get into this good, bad, and ugly review. Now I think this is the most attractive of the System 51 watches. Now I did own the original one. It was a red plastic one. If you check my video archived, I did a review on it. I couldn't get into the plastic, so I actually sold it. But when I sold it, I actually got my money back, so I didn't lose a dime. And this one I plan on keeping. I like the metal look. I like the pen striping on the strap itself. I love the dial, how it has that pilot's look to it. Uh, I love the exhibition case back. I think that's very attractive. And especially at the price, you know, you have the stamped swatch name. Very attractive watch, if you ask me. Now, let's get into some basic information. This one is 42 millimeters in diameter. It's 13.8 millimeters thick. It does have a push-pull crown. It does not screw down. It is water resistant to 3 ATM, so you don't want to take this in the swimming pool. And you don't want to go out in the ocean diving with it. Wouldn't recommend that. Then it comes with a two-year warranty. Now, let's get into the good part of this particular watch. Obviously, those of you out there that know about this particular one, you know it comes with that 90-hour power reserve. It is an in-house movement, completely automated, so no human hands touching it. You know, I like the design of it. Like I said, to me, this is the best looking of the System 51s. You know, I like that it's not polished. There are, the ones that I've seen in the Irony Collection are mostly polished. I like that this one is brushed. So it gives it a nice look. I like that it can fit a smaller wrist because of the lug designs, the way it just goes down like that. So if you have a smaller wrist, feel free. You should be able to uh, pull this one off. And the best part to this new watch is that it can now be serviced, unlike the plastic versions, which cannot. So if you wanted to send this in now, this watch cost $195. I do not know what a servicing would cost. I never plan on sending it in for servicing. I mean, it could be inexpensive, you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, which I would consider. But if it's 100, 200, something like that, I'm not interested. This is not going to be a daily driver. It's not going to get a lot of wrist time. So in that particular case, you know, I'm not really worried about it, but it is nice. So those of you out there that bought the uh, plastic version can't be serviced. The newer version can be serviced. Then let's get into some of the bad of this watch. Now, I do, like I said, like the lug design, but it is proprietary. So, unless, you know, you stay in the Swatch family for straps, you can't go outside. So, if you want to add an aftermarket strap, not going to work. I mean, you might be able to find some, but uh, basically, you're stuck with the Swatch brand for straps. And on this particular one, the strap is just too long. I mean, I have a, almost a 7-inch wrist. This almost comes all the way around. The strap is just way too long. And then, of course, the bezel doesn't rotate. Now, does it have to? No, not really. But it has the look of a rotating bezel. So I wish that would work, but not a deal breaker. And let's get into the ugly with this particular watch. Now... The loom on this thing, I've checked out some uh, sites, you know, and some YouTube videos. Some people says they say it has loom, some say it doesn't. If you check out Swatch's website, it does have loom. I was going to charge it, you know, just to show you in this video, but the loom is incredibly weak and it doesn't last a very long time. You're talking like minute or two minutes with it. The loom is horrible on this particular watch. And then the other thing is, like I said, the strap is way too long. And then the, the, the plastic crystals on the front and back, I think for this price range, they could at least stepped up to mineral. And now you can polish the plastic, you know, if you scratch it up. You know, it probably would be very inexpensive to have it replaced. But for $195, I think they should at least give you a mineral crystal. And then we're going to get to the ugliest of all ugly things about this particular watch is, of course, the price and what you get. Now, that in-house movement, you know, and the way it's made with the 90-hour power reserve, that's really nice. But you can find better bargains 
for $200 than this particular watch. Now, this watch does have some history to it. You know, there is some horological significance because the way the watch has been produced. But all in all, if you want a better value for $195, $200, you're better off looking at an Orient, a Seiko, or some other brand like that. You will definitely get more for your money than you will with this. Once again, this is StyleCon. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, leave them down below. And I will check you out in the next video.